Hello, welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use your TID4, your GDC, to help you to solve um, trick equations. Okay, so this is example 11 from the textbook. Example 11 from the textbook. So the, what they want us to do is to solve the equation cosine theta is equal to 0 0.4, and your theta can be from negative 360 degrees to 360 degrees. And your they want us to give out they want us to give the answers to the nearest tenth. Okay, so when we are solving trig equations, this is the um, the limitation of where your x value can be or your angle can be is very very important okay we need to be very careful with that all right because when we are using our calculator we need to that will actually affect our settings so now since my angles are in degrees the first thing i'm going to do is to switch my angles to degrees so now my degree is highlighted i can go back to my calculator page and I'm just going to say y is equal to cosine of x. Close it. But before I click on graph, I'm actually going to go to my window. And you'll see why. Because right now, my minimum is negative 66. Uh, you might have a different value, but the minimum should be at least negative 360. So I'm going to go, just to be safe, maybe negative three um three six five just to be sure i have a little bit extra on the left and for the right the upper bound i'll have positive three six five for the y min and y max now this is something that uh since this is a, this is our first time using the gdc to solve trick equations for now uh, if you think about it, the maximum cosine value has to be 1. The minimum cosine value is negative 1. So y min, which is the minimum value, negative 2 should be more than enough. Does that make sense? And for the maximum, 2 should be more than enough. However, the minimum and the maximum value of your y values could change if we have some sort of transformation. And we will talk about that in future videos. We can leave everything else everything else like the, as they are. And now we can go to graph. Okay. So we the blue the blue curve that we see right now, the blue wave that we see, that's cosine theta. Um, and they want us to find when, what angle will give us um, a 0 0.4, right? What angle will give us a 0 0.4? So all we have to do is to go, go back to my y equals 2, where I can insert the value of the equations. And I'm going to put a 0.4 there. So now I will see a horizontal line. And... This is when cosine theta is equal to 0 0.4. This is when cosine theta equals 0 0.4. This is when cosine theta equals 0 0.4. And this is when cosine theta equals 0 0.4. And they're asking us, what's the angle there? What's the angle there? What's that angle? And what is that angle? So all we have to do now is second calc. And then we we look for the intersection. So the first curve is the blue one. That's correct. And I can say uh, the first one is the blue. The second curve is the red color one. So that's good. They want us a guess value. I'm going to bring it somewhat close. So the first intersection is when my angle is negative 293.6. All right, so the first one is when um, negative 293.6, was it? 293.6.
this is degrees yeah degrees and then the next one the next one i just have to repeat the process repeat the steps uh intersect and the first the first curve is the blue one so that's good and the second curve is the red one a guess value so the second angle is negative 66.4 negative 66.4 degree we just repeat the steps again and then we have 66.4 and um okay so we have, we have one more one more over there so second calc and then we go to intersect again. Blue curve. The first curve is blue. That's good. Second curve is red. That's good. Guess value. And the intersection is 293.6. All right. That's it. Um, we got all four of them. OK. So you can see that how, how does this boundary over here make a difference. If today it starts from zero, then we only we'll only have one point over here and another point over there. Right? But because of the boundary, we have more solution. Okay. Now let's look at the next example. In the next example, I oops. Okay, in the next example, oh, let me delete that. Okay, in the next example, we are going to pretty much uh, solve the equation with the same approach. However, if you look, if you take a, if you take take a closer look, the the angle right now is in radian, so we need to switch to radian. And then we can go back to my equation. My equation is sine x. I'm going to have sine x first. And my linear equation, uh, I have a linear equation, which, which is 0.25x minus 0.3. But before I click on the graph, I'm going I'm to go to my window. Because right now, my x min and x max. My minimum is negative 365 radian, which is not correct, because that should be negative 2 pi radian. Right? And the maximum should be 2 pi radian. Okay? For the one min, well, for the minimum y and the minimum, minimum, uh, maximum y, we'll keep that for now. And let's take a look at the graph. So this is the sine x um, in radian mode. The blue line represents the sine x, and the red line that's coming out right now, that's my linear line. And we have one, two, three. We have three solutions. So second calc, again, intersect. The first curve is the blue one. All right, so my first first answer is negative 2.15, negative 2.15 radian. And uh, we have two more points, so just repeat. Bring it close to the intersection point. The next point is negative 0.41. One six negative zero point four one six radian and last one last last intersection okay so that would be two point seven five radian. 
okay? Um, and that's it. That's how you use your GDC, your TI-84, uh, with to solve you to help you to solve trig equations. Remember, be careful with your angle setting. Is it degree? Is it radian? And then when you go to window, you have to set the min and max accordingly. Later on, we might we will learn how to um, how to use the right settings for your y. But for now, um, keeping it between negative five or even negative three to positive three, negative three to positive three, that should work for now. But later on, when we come when we are dealing with transformation, then we need to know how to change the y mean and y max. Okay? Hope you guys find this video helpful. I'll see you. Bye-bye.